postmortem lesions in CCPP in case of sheep and goats. It's a contagious caprine pleuronemonia caused by mycoplasma, various species of mycoplasma that includes mycoplasma mycoides capri, mycoplasma capricolum species, and its transmission is through coughing, sneezing, droplet infection, and it is through the ear. Then sometimes the pomids uh, is one of the source of infection like fur, keeper's cloth, metal bars, walls, because animals are generally picking the, these bars and walls. So in that case, sometimes there are chances of the uh, transmission of infection from that places. This is a chronic type of illness uh, characterized by high fever, uh, coughing is there, wasting is there, and animal is not able to uh, do the work properly, work intolerance is there. If uh, go for grazing, uh, it will sit down immediately. Uh, that is uh, definitely called as exercise intolerance. Then incubation period of this disease is uh, 6 to 10 days and it may last for 4 weeks. Morbidity percent may be high, uh, up to 100%, but mortality may be 80 to 100% if the animals are not treated within, within a time and properly. So in that case, mortality may also get increased. Then predisposing factor, uh, zero grazing system. Generally, in case of zero grazing system, uh, there is a lack of isolation strategy. If the farm is not having the proper isolation strategy, in that case, there are chances of the spreading of infection very fast. Then poor ventilation. If the walls are too big and there is no cross ventilation, in that case also, there are chances of the retention of ammonia, much more ammonia in the shed. And that lead one of the predisposing factor in that uh, zero grazing type of uh, shed, shed system. Then mixing up multiple age groups, generally small animals, big animals or the adult animals, pregnant animals, if they are keeping all together, then again, there are chances of the transmission of disease or the uh, these animals are more prone to the uh, mycoplasma infection. Then poor hygienic conditions in farm, the, if the cleanly, uh, cleanliness is not proper, air is not proper, air frequencies are not proper, in that case, there are chances of the uh, infection in the particular flock. Then frequent visitors. If the visitors are coming from various places, then they are also the one of the factors that may lead to the transmission of infection. Then immunosuppression by any means, maybe the stress of the or transportation stress of the nutritional stress, we can say, uh, deficiency of vitamin E, selenium, uh, then the, any kind of stress that lead to the immunosuppression. So these are the predisposing factors that can be seen in zero grazing system. Now, in case of grazing type of animals, the lack of isolation, the, here in the grazing type of animals, uh, daily they are changing their uh, places at night. So the lack of isolation is completely observed in such type of animals. So all animals, they are present huddled together and the infected, non-infected animals, they all come together and there are chances of the transmission of uh, diseases very fastly. Then natural head to head crowding tendency during night hours. So generally the flock is there, they are lined by or they are covered by some temporary type of fencing. And all these animals, they come together, they crowd together and there is a much more chances of the transmission of disease from one animal to animal, anim uh, other animals, especially in case of sheep. Exposure to the extreme environmental conditions like cold, summer, rainy season, poor quality of feedstuffs, low immune status, they say all these factors, they are called as a predisposing factors for the, uh, this disease, postmortem lesions. Presence of serous to fibrinous material in thoracic cavity. Then there is an adhesion of pleura to the intercostal muscles, fibrinopirulent or serofibrinous material present in the thoracic cavity. Same type of material can be seen in the bronchi and trachea. Then severe consolidation of lungs, serofibrinous pleuritis is there, fibrinous pericarditis and marbling of lung. These are the characteristic features of the uh, postmortem lesions in case of the CCPP or we can say mycoplasma in sheep and goat. So serofibrinous material present in thoracic cavity, adhesion to the pleura, uh, adhesion of pleura to the intercostal muscles, fibrinopurulent or serofibrinous material in thoracic cavity, bronchi and trachea, consolidation of lungs, uh, serofibrinous pleuritis, fibrinous pericarditis and marbling of lung. These are the typical characteristic features of the CCPP. Here we can see different stages of the this CCPP. So somewhere we can see much more portion of the lung is not affected, some lobes are affected and we can see the, there is a deeper in the different stages of the uh, CCPP. So here we can see fibrinopirulent material it is accumulated over the surface of uh, lungs. Similar type of material can be seen over the surface of the heart also. Here also we can see the heart is present over here and this is covered by the fibrinopirulent type of material. Now we can see some serious type of fluid present in the thoracic cavity. 
then we can see the half of the portion of the lung is affected and showing the fibrino uh, fibrinopullulant uh, material which is attached to the pericardium and the some portion of the lobes of the lungs so this is a presence of uh, serous fluid in thoracic cavity and this is nothing but the serofibrinous material uh, which is adhere to the pura and pericardium again the similar type of lesions here we can see the uh, the half of the portion of lung is affected consolidation is there and fibrinopullulant material along with that the serous fluid accumulated into the thoracic cavity so fibrinous uh, fibrinopullulant material and serous fluid in the thoracic cavity so the fibrinopurulent uh, pluritis and serous fluid in thoracic cavity is the same type of lesions, but here, uh, if we can see the whole lobe of the lung is affected, so, or the, all the lobes of uh, lungs are affected, all lungs are covered by the fibrinopurulent type of material. So here we can see the fibrinopurulent material is present, uh, adhere to the pleura of the anterior portion of the lobes, and the thoracic cavity is uh, filled with the serous type of material, fibrinopurulent pluritis addition to the intercostal muscles and zero fibrinous fluid in the thoracic cavity. So here you can see serous plus fibrinous. So both type of fluid can be present as the case get advanced. So here we can see there is an addition of the pleura, pleura to the intercostal muscle. So these are the some threads like structures. So that is the addition of the pleura to the intercostal muscles. Some advanced case of the same thing. So fibrinopurulant pleuritis addition to the intercostal muscles and serofibrinous fluid in the thoracic cavity. So here you can see the severe uh, adhesions and uh, accumulation of the fluid. It is also similar type of lesions. So here completely the pericardium and the uh, lobe of the lungs are affected. So here we can see this, this lobe was, was also affected or the covered by this fibrinous material, but it get detached due, during the handling of that lung. But you can see the whole lung is affected or the whole lung is covered by the similar type of material. Again, here we can see like a toffee or the uh, kulfi like structures, the completely thoracic cavity is filled with the, this type of lesions or the, this type of covering over the whole thoracic cavity. The whole thoracic cavity is covered by the fibrinopurulent purulent material that includes lungs and pericardium also. Fluid which is accumulated into the thoracic cavity, it is a little bit uh, thicker and having the more, much more fibrinous type of material. It gets clotted once it gets exposed to the air. So this type of fluid is get clotted. It becomes like a gelatinous type of mass once it gets exposed to the air because of presence of fibrinous material or the fibrin. Here again same, we can see the adhesions. Here again adhesions to the lungs regions of pleura to the intercostal muscles and the presence of fluid in the thoracic cavity. Once we remove the portion which is present over the surface of lung, we can see the thickness or the lobes are become thick. They are become consolidated. The air is get removed from that particular area because of the inflammatory reactions. Uh, after removal of the surface material of the fibrinous material, we can see the, there is a consolidation. So maybe the whole lung is affected, maybe the some lobe, lobe of the lungs are affected. So like that, we can see the consolidation of lungs can be observed in such type of cases. But the little bit fibrinous type of material is still present over the surface of the pericardium that, uh, that was not removed from uh, me. So here we can see this type of material is present over here. Here, typical consolidation and the marbling type of lungs can be observed. So a little bit connected to proliferation, fibrinous material uh, proliferation present in the uh, interlobular spaces. And here we can see the pericardium. It is covered by the fibrinous type of material. Again, the consolidation and fibrinous pluritis, you can see the little bit, uh, though I have separated that material, but till it is present over the surface. So this is a consolidation, marbling and fibrinous type of pluritis. Consolidation, marbling, and fibrinous pleuritis and pericarditis. Here we can see the thing which is present in my hand. It is a fibrinous type of pericarditis and whole lobe of lungs are affected by the fibrinous type of material. Here we can see the typical type of marbling. So the fibrinous type of material, but it is a little bit, we can see the advanced stage of the CCPP. Consolidation, marbling, fibrinous pleuritis, and there is a presence of marbling type of appearance to the lungs. Again, the same thing, the consolidation, marbling, and fibrinous type of pleuritis and pericarditis. Here we can see the lobe of lungs and here the heart is present and that is shown the fibrinous type of pleuritis. Here we can see the typical lesions in the heart, the surface of heart or the pericardium is become a fibrinous type of material is accumulated or is get infiltrated into the pericardial sac or the, around the pericardial sac. And that's why the same thing, the consolidation is there. This portion of lungs are consolidated and the surface of pericardium, it is covered by the fibrinous type of material. 
again consolidation marbling uh, in the same fashion another picture with the same type of lesions again the same thing the consolidation marbling uh, and fibrinous type of pleuritis consolidation marbling and fibrinous pleuritis here again we can see the severe pericarditis fibrinous uh, fibrinous purulent pericarditis marbling is there and consolidation is also present so this is a heart and this is a lung portion and uh, we can see small small areas of the marbling here we can see the marbling is observed over here the similar type of lesions over here most of the portion of the lung is affected the pericardium is also affected and it is covered by the fibrinous type of material the cut portion of the same type of lungs will show thickened portion so we can see the difference color difference is there so these uh, these structures which are white one uh, that indicates there is a consolidation the, there is a thickening or the marbling is there repetition of lung is there so consistency of lungs is become that of liver so that is the consolidation and we can see the consolidation of lungs over here uh, so another cut portion of the lung uh, so here we can see the this portion is completely consolidated or hepatized again the another picture cut section of the lungs will have the marbling consolidation and hepatization here we can see the sequestra formation some sometimes there is a pus like thing they are present or the fibrinous type of material they can be present or penetrated into the deeper portion of the lungs so once we cut that portion we can see there is presence of fibrinous type of or the yellowish whitish type of material accumulated into the lung tissues so here we can see the marbling and cut section of the same lung will show the the sequestra formation or the sequestra like structures are present the, again the another cut section will show the typical type of consolidation and hepatization again another picture with the consolidation digestion and marbling formation of uh, marbling formation and sequestra formation in lung tissues so here all these are the whitey structures they are the small small or the uh, dot like uh, sequestra they are formed you can see here these small small sequestras are formed in the lung tissues the same same type of pictures here we can see the small small sequestra they are formed in the lung tissues here you can see the sequestra a uh, little bit uh, aggregated sequestra this is a big aggregated sequestra that can be present into the lung tissues here again the severe sequestra formation we can see uh, the throughout the lung tissues we can see the white white nodular type of lesions uh, that contain the pus like material and that is nothing but the sequestra formation and uh, this type of all these lungs are they are covered by the fibrinopurulent type of material that is a fibrinopurulent pleuritis again the same type of lesions we can see the froth is coming through this uh, bronchi and consolidation the sequestra formation so everything is there in this portion of the lung again the same type of picture so consolidation of lung marbling sequestra formation in lung tissues the same similar type of lesions over here typical marbling we can see the fibrous connect uh, connective tissue or fibrinous material is get uh, deposited into the interlobular septa interlobular space and that little typical marbling type of appearance uh, thank you very much